All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Saira Mujtaba and with me is Subhadra Ramachandran. The headlines. Polling begins in 44 seats spread across 5 districts in West Bengal for fourth phase of assembly elections. Over 1.15 crore voters to decide the fate of 373 candidates. Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds virtual summit with his Dutch counterpart says the two countries working together in new areas like Indo-Pacific supply chains and global digital governance. Over 9 crore 78 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far. 1,31,968 new cases reported across the country. 10 states account for over 83% of the new COVID-19 cases. In Chhattisgarh, total lockdown enforced in 8 districts in view of spike in COVID-19 cases. Teakout served to be organized across the nation from tomorrow to fight the surging coronavirus infections. Election Commission asks political parties to observe COVID guidelines during election campaign. Four people killed in fire incident at Nagpur Hospital. President Prime Minister expressed grief. And in cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore defeat Mumbai Indians by two wickets in the opening match of Indian Premier League in Chennai. Chennai Super Kings to take on Delhi Capitals in Mumbai this evening. As the number of covid cases are on the rise again we appeal to our listeners not to lower their guard take all precautions and all those above 45 years to get vaccinated without any hesitation stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene and now the news in detail In Poll Bound West Bengal polling for the fourth phase of assembly elections began this morning at 7 a.m. Polling will be conducted till 6:30 p.m. All necessary facilities and security arrangements have been made to ensure free and fair polling during this phase. Now we go live to our correspondent Manas Pratim Sharma in Alipurdwar of North Bengal. Manas, uh, how is the polling going on and in which election booth you are presently in? Well, Sarah. Good morning to you, and good morning to all listeners. I am right now outside railway higher secondary polling booth. There are three polling booths here, and polling, as you said, polling has begun seven in the morning. But uh, voters started reaching the polling booth much before uh, around six to six thirty a.m. Now polling is going on very smoothly. I am telling you, uh, all the COVID protocols have been followed here, including the social distancing, wearing of face masks, hand gloves. All things have been maintained, and proper security arrangements have been uh, taken. Half section of Central Armed Police Forces means at least five security personnel have been deployed in each polling booth. So far, so good. No untoward incident has been reported in these areas so far. Back to you. Thank you, Manas, for that update. that was our correspondent manas pratim sharma reporting from alipur dwar and now we go live to our correspondent uh, madhuparna in south antipur pargnas madhuparna so far we have seen heavy voter turnout in west bengal how is the enthusiasm of the voters in this phase of polling and which election booth you are covering now uh, yes saira usually the voter turnout in west bengal is on the higher side and as we have seen in the last three phases the average voter turnout was more or less around 85% and today on the fourth phase i have been visiting various booths since this morning and right now i am at a model booth under taliganj constituency of south 24 parganas where union minister babul supriyo of the bjp has locked horns with state minister arup bishwas who is the trinamool congress candidate as i was saying that since this morning we have seen large number of voters they are standing patiently in queues and waiting for their turn to cast their vote and uh, the very important thing uh, thing this time is covid rules strict covid rules are being followed in all the constituencies and particularly all the booths i have visited since morning i have seen that uh, 
people are uh, standing in queues and maintaining social distancing and ASHA workers, they are doing their part, providing one hand gloves and sanitizer and they are taking the temperature with the thermal screening gun and social distancing is maintained, all the circles, these are drawn and people, people at large, they are also following and they are very patiently and eagerly waiting for their turn. As far as the security is concerned, a large number of security personnel, they have been deployed to ensure free, fair and peaceful polling. Saira? Thank you, Madhuparna, for that update. Voter verifiable paper audit trail VVPAT is being used along with electronic voting machines EVM at all polling stations with a view to enhance the transparency of the election process. In view of the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic, the option of postal ballot facility has been extended to the electors who are COVID-19 positive or suspect as certified by competent authority and are in home or institutional quarantine along with those marked as persons with disabilities and above the age of 80 years. In all, 373 candidates including 50 women will be vying for the 44 assembly seats spread over five districts during the fourth phase. Over 1.15 crore voters, including 56.94 lakh women and 293 third gender persons, will decide the fate of these candidates. Bharati Janta Party and ruling AITC are contesting for all the 44 seats, while Congress, left parties, and the alliance partner Indian Secular Front are fighting under the banner of Sanyuk Morcha. CPIM has fielded 22 candidates, BSP has 13, Congress 9. AIFB 6, ISF 4, RSP 2, and CPI 1. For the fifth phase of state assembly elections in West Bengal, the high-paged electioneering campaign is gaining momentum. Campaigning is also on for the simultaneous by-elections of two Lok Sabha seats, including Tirupati in Andhra Pradesh and Belgaum in Karnataka, along with 14 assembly constituencies in 11 states. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged the people to vote today in West Bengal Assembly elections and to do so in record numbers. He has especially requested the youth and women to vote in large numbers. Campaigning for the later phases is going on in West Bengal as top leaders of various political parties are crisscrossing the constituencies. Senior BJP leader Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be visiting West Bengal again today. He will be addressing two public meetings at Kavakali in Siliguri and at Krishnanagar in Nodia. This will be his fourth visit to the state within 10 days. On the other hand, Trinamool Congress leader Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee will be attending three rallies in North 24 Parganas. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that India and the Netherlands are working together for supply chain in Indo-Pacific region. Holding the virtual summit with the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Mark Rutte, last evening, Mr. Modi said the relationship between the two countries is based on the shared values of democracy and rule of law. He said they are also developing convergence in new areas like Indo-Pacific resilient supply chains and global digital governance. Our democracy और रूल ऑफ लॉ जैसे शेयर्ड वैल्यूज पर आधारित है क्लाइमेट चेंज टेररिज्म पैंडेमिक्स जैसी वैश्विक चुनौतियों पर हमारी अप्रोच एक समान है इंडो पैसिफिक रेजिलिएंट सप्लाई चेंज और ग्लोबल डिजिटल गवर्नेंस जैसे नए क्षेत्रों में भी हमारे बीच कन्वर्जेंस बन रहा है आज हम अपनी स्ट्रेटजिक पार्टनरशिप ऑन वाटर से इस सिलसिले को एक नया आयाम देंगे the establishment of fast track mechanism for investment promotion also gives new momentum to strong economic cooperation between the two countries. He expressed confidence that post COVID period, many new opportunities will be generated in which like minded countries can enhance mutual collaborations. Over 9.78 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered so far in the country. These include around 90 lakh healthcare workers, HCWs, who have taken the first dose and around 55 lakh HCWs who have taken the second dose, around 99 lakh frontline workers, FLWs, with the first dose and over 46 lakh FLWs with the second dose. On the 84th day of nationwide COVID-19 vaccination yesterday, over 32 lakh vaccine doses were given across the country, out of which over 28 lakh beneficiaries were vaccinated for the first dose and around 4 lakh beneficiaries received the second dose of the vaccine.
टेन स्टेट इंक्लूडिंग महाराष्ट्र छत्तीसगढ़ उत्तर प्रदेश डेली कर्नाटका केरला मध्य प्रदेश तमिलनाडु गुजरात एंड राजस्थान हैव शोन अ राइज इन द कोविड डेली न्यू केसेज ओवर एटी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ द न्यू केसेज वर रिपोर्टेड फ्रॉम दीज टेन स्टेट्स अ टोटल ऑफ वन लैख थर्टी वन थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी एट न्यू केसेज वर रिपोर्टेड इन द कंट्री इन द पास्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स टेकिंग द क्यूमुलेटिव पॉजिटिव केसेज टू ओवर वन क्रॉस थर्टी लैक्स इन द सेम टाइम पीरियड सेवन हंड्रेड एंड एटी डेथ वर ऑल्सो रिपोर्टेड टेकिंग द टोल टू ओवर वन लैख सिक्सटी सेवन थाउजेंड No fresh case of COVID-19 has been reported in the last 7 days in 149 districts while 8 districts reported no new case in the last 14 days. There are 3 districts where no fresh case of virus has been witnessed in the last 21 days and also in the last 28 days 63 districts reported no new case of the infection. In Chhattisgarh, eight districts will be under total lockdown as the respective district administrations have issued orders in view of spike in COVID-19 infection. Lockdown is already effective in state capital district of Raipur and neighboring Durg district. Our Raipur correspondent reports that lockdown will begin in Rajnandgaon, Bimetra, and Balor districts from this evening. Jashpur, Koria, and Balot Bazar districts will be under lockdown from Sunday. Passengers coming to Chhattisgarh by air travel will now have to bring a negative report of the RT-PCR test with them. This test must be done within 72 hours before arriving at the airport. Those passengers who do not have the RT-PCR test report of the scheduled time period will have to undergo COVID test at the airport. The Chhattisgarh government is establishing RT-PCR test facilities at all airports and railway stations in the state. Meanwhile, Raipur district administration has decided to convert the indoor stadium of the capital into a temporary covid center beds with oxygen facility will be made available in this stadium it has also been decided that in the district now only a maximum of 10 persons will be allowed to attend marriage ceremony or funerals during the 10 day lockdown period in raipur district people visiting the district will have to get an e pass however people traveling by train plane no bus will not need an e pass their travel ticket will be considered as e pass vikalp shukla aia news raipur in madhya pradesh lockdown has been enforced in all cities of the state from 6 pm yesterday to to 6 am on monday to check the spread of the corona virus infection madhya pradesh reported 4882 new cases of corona virus in the past 24 hours taking its tally to around 3 lakh 27000 as per official data 23 fatalities pushed the death toll to 4136 we have more from our bhopal correspondent in the past 3 weeks the state government was already imposed lockdowns in bhopal indore jabalpur and gwalior on sunday and extended the restrictions to some other cities from last sunday meanwhile the state government is trying to increase the number of beds for covid-19 patients in the state to more than 1 lakh private hospitals are also being roped to increase the number of beds for covid-19 patients Besides increasing the number of beds the government has also decided to set up one covid care center in each district out of 52 districts in the state 26 districts have reported more than 50 patients yesterday Sanjeev Sharma AIR News Bhopal Uttarakhand cabinet has decided to impose night curfew in the state capital Dehradun spokesperson of the cabinet mr subodh unyal told media last night that an order in this regard will be issued soon he said that schools will its classes up to 12 will be closed till 30th april in dehradun haridwar nainital and haldwani due to increase of corona pandemic meanwhile 748 new cases of covid-19 were detected in the state tikka utsav is being celebrated across india from tomorrow to fight the surging covid-19 cases During his meeting with the chief ministers of various states on Thursday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had appealed to the states and union territories to organize vaccination festival. During the meeting, the Prime Minister appealed to the states and union territories to organize vaccination festival or Tikka Utsav with a view to vaccinate maximum number of eligible people against the coronavirus from 11th April to 14th April. 11th April is the birth anniversary of Jyoti Baba Phule and 14th is the birth anniversary of Baba Saheb Ambedkar. 11 April Jyoti Baba Phule ji ki janm jayanti hai aur 14 April Baba Saheb Ambedkar ji ki janm jayanti. Kya hum 11 April se 14 April 
पूरे अपने राज्य में टीका उत्सव मना सकते हैं एक पूरा वातावरण क्रिएट कर सकते हैं टीका उत्सव का एक विशेष अभियान चलाकर हम ज्यादा से ज्यादा एलिजिबल लोगों को वैक्सीनेट करें जीरो वेस्टेज तय करें हम इन चार दिन जो है टीका उत्सव में जीरो वेस्टेज हो वो भी हमारी वैक्सीनेशन कैपेसिटी को बढ़ा देगा मिस्टर मोदी कार्ड अपॉन द यूथ टू हेल्प इन गेटिंग एवरी वन एबव फोर्टी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ एज वैक्सीनेटेड ही ऑल्सो अर्ज द स्टेट फॉर हंड्रेड परसेंट वैक्सीनेशन ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव प्लस पॉपुलेशन इन द हाई फोकस डिस्ट्रिक्ट ड्यूरिंग द मीटिंग द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो स्टेट ऑन द नीड टू फोकस ऑन टेस्ट ट्रैक ट्रीट कोविड एप्रोप्रिएट बिहेवियर एंड कोविड मैनेजमेंट आनंद कुमार ए आई आर न्यूज डेली अ वेल नोन फोक सिंगर ऑफ राजस्थान सीमा मिश्रा सेज एवरी वन एलिजिबल शुड गेट वैक्सीनेटेड एंड मेक द वैक्सीनेशन फेस्टिवल अ मैसेज सक्सेस नमस्कार मैं सीमा मिश्रा सभी से ये अनुरोध करूंगी कि अभी चारों तरफ कोविड फैल रहा है तो उसे देखते हुए मैं सभी से निवेदन करूंगी कि वैक्सीन जरूर लगवाएं और मास्क का प्रयोग करें सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग बनाई रखें और भीड़ भाड़ वाली जगह से परहेज रखें अपने घर में ही रहें बहुत जरूरी काम हो तो घर से बाहर जाए तो सभी से निवेदन है कि वैक्सीन जरूर लगवाएं क्योंकि वैक्सीन जब तक नहीं लगेगी तब तक हम कोरोना से नहीं जीत पाएंगे तो इसलिए लड़ने के लिए हमें वैक्सीनेशन बहुत जरूरी है जिन्होंने अभी तक नहीं लगवाई है उनसे निवेदन है कि प्लीज प्लीज जरूर वैक्सीन उत्तर प्रदेश चीफ मिनिस्टर योगी आदित्यनाथ हैज अपील टू द पीपल ऑफ द स्टेट टू टेक पार्ट इन द टीक आउट सेल्फ द वैक्सीनेशन ड्राइव स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम टुमारो एंड स्ट्रिक्टली फॉलो कोविड प्रोटोकॉल्स The state government is preparing for the take out surf which will start with 6000 vaccination centers in the state tomorrow. कोरोना महामारी को नियंत्रित करने में टीकाकरण की महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका है आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने आगामी 11 अप्रैल को महात्मा ज्योतिबा फुले जी की जयंती से लेकर 14 अप्रैल 2021 को बाबा साहब डॉक्टर भीमराव अंबेडकर जी की जयंती तक टीका उत्सव मनाए जाने का आह्वान किया है सभी प्रदेशवासियों से मेरी अपील है टीका उत्सव के दौरान लक्षित आयु वर्ग के अधिक से अधिक लोग कोविड टीकाकरण कराए टीकाकरण के बाद भी सावधानी जरूरी है इसलिए सभी से अपील है कि वे सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग का पालन करते हुए पूरी सावधानी के साथ दो गज की दूरी मास्क है जरूरी कौन पालन सख्ती से करें अमित राइजिंग कोविड केसेस इन उत्तर प्रदेश डिफेंस मिनिस्टर एंड एमपी फ्रॉम लखनऊ राजनाथ सिंह स्पोक टू चीफ मिनिस्टर योगी आदित्यनाथ रिगार्डिंग द कोविड सिचुएशन इन स्टेट कैपिटल लखनऊ Uttar Pradesh recorded 9,695 new COVID cases yesterday, and around one third of them were from Lucknow alone. The Defence Minister expressed his concern over the current COVID situation in Lucknow. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath told him that state government is expanding the bed capacity in different hospitals of the city. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Polling begins in 44 seats spread across five districts in West Bengal. for the fourth phase of assembly elections over 1.15 crore voters to decide the fate of 373 candidates prime minister narendra modi holds virtual summit with his dutch counterpart says the two countries working together in new areas like indo pacific supply chains and global digital governance over 9 crore 78 lakh doses of covid-19 vaccine administered in the country so far 1 lakh 31968 new cases reported across the country Ten states account for over 83 percent of the new COVID-19 cases. In Chhattisgarh, total lockdown enforced in eight districts in view of the spike in COVID-19 cases. Tikka Utsav to be organized across the nation from tomorrow to fight the surging coronavirus infection. Election Commission asks political parties to observe COVID guidelines during election campaign. Four people killed in fire incident at Nagpur Hospital. President Prime Minister expressed grief. And in cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore defeat Mumbai Indians by two wickets in the opening match of Indian Premier League in Chennai. Chennai Super Kings to take on Delhi Capitals in Mumbai this evening. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Hello, welcome to the show. Welcome back you are listening to the morning news 
The Election Commission has asked political parties to observe COVID-19 guidelines in all seriousness, saying in case of breach, it will not hesitate in banning public meetings and rallies of the defaulting leaders. The Commission has taken a serious view of the laxity in maintaining norms, particularly not wearing masks and not keeping social distance by political leaders on stage in the ongoing elections. In a letter to leaders of all national and state political parties, the Commission said the instances of election campaigns came to its notice when norms of social distancing, wearing masks and others have flouted. The poll panel said by doing so, the political parties and candidates are exposing themselves as well as the public to the grave danger of infection. It added that political leaders, campaigners and candidates are expected to be torchbearers for the campaign against COVID-19 and they should not only follow the guidelines but also exhort people attending elections events to follow COVID protocols. Reiterating its earlier guidelines, the Commission has sought cooperation from the political parties and candidates for the strictest observance of COVID protocols. It has urged the leaders to demonstrate by personal example and nudge all supporters at the beginning of the rallies and meetings to wear masks, use sanitizers and also put in place crowd control measures. Delhi has recorded 8,521 fresh cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. Over 5,000 people have recovered while 39 people have died due to COVID in the city. At present, the positivity rate stands at 7.79% in the national capital. A two-time member of Legislative Assembly of Maharashtra, Rao Saab Antapurkar, died last night in Mumbai. The 55-year-old Congress MLA was tested COVID positive. He represented Diglur Biloli Assembly constituency of Nanded district. He was initially treated in Nanded city after testing COVID positive and shifted to Mumbai for further treatment. In Ladakh, the COVID cases are going up by each passing day. 116 confirmed cases were reported yesterday. Our correspondent has filed this report. One in the 16 new cases detection is another spike in COVID-19 in Ladakh during this week, with discharge of 64 recovered patients. And by one in the 16 new cases, the number of total positive cases now stand 557 in the Union Treaty, with 509 cases in Lay District alone. The administration is continuously screening all the arriving passengers for COVID-19 at the KBR Airport Lay. Yesterday, one. 1,669 passengers have been screened at the airport. With Ramesh Chandra, this is Young Sandolma for Air News from Lilata. At least four people were killed and several others injured after a fire broke out in a private hospital in Maharashtra's Nagpur last night. The fire is suspected to have started from an AC unit of the ICU located on the second floor of the hospital, which is treating COVID-19 patients. According to Nagpur Municipal Corporation's Chief Fire Officer Rajendra Uchke, the blaze remained confined to the second floor and did not spread further. President Ramnath Kovind has expressed grief over the loss of lives due to fire at a hospital in Nagpur. In a tweet, Mr. Kovind said the loss of lives in the fire is distressing. He conveyed his deep sympathies to the bereaved families and pray for the speedy recovery of those injured in this accident. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also expressed grief over the incident. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said his thoughts are with the families of those who lost their lives. He also prayed that the injured recover at the earliest. In Jammu and Kashmir, a territorial army soldier, Mohammed Saleem, was shot by terrorists last evening at his residence in Jablipura near Bij Bihara in South Kashmir's Anantnag district. Defence spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Imran Musvi said that the 43-year-old soldier was shot by two terrorists and sustained severe head injuries. No cricket fan could ask for a better start of the Indian Premier League 2021 season after witnessing a last ball thriller at Chennai's M. H. Damram Stadium last night. Chasing a decent target of 160, Virat Kohli led Royal Challengers Bangalore, defeated reigning champions Mumbai Indians by two wickets in a nail-biting finish. A report. RCB were powered by A.B. de Villiers' 27 ball 48, while Glenn Maxwell contributed with an equally important 28 ball 39 knock. 
With seven runs left to win from the final six deliveries, it was left to RCB's bowling hero and man of the match, Harshal Patel, to score the winning run in a pulsating finish. Widely billed as a contest between the two of India's big hitters, Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma, the entire limelight, however, was hogged by Haryana's right-arm pacer, Harshal Patel, who restricted champions Mumbai to a modest total of 159 for nine. After Mumbai Indian opener, Chris Lynn smashed 49 of just 35 balls, Harshal Patel took 5 for 27 and in the process became the first ever bowler to take a 5 wicket haul against Mumbai Indians in the IPL. In another key clash this evening, cricket's Rishabh Pant led Delhi Capitals will take on three time champions Dhoni led Chennai Super Kings at the Mumbai's Wankhede Stadium. In the other sporting headlines this morning, a move that could well surprise Indian hockey fans, former Indian coach Harendra Singh has been named USA hockey team coach. He's the man who guided Indian junior team to lift the World Cup title in 2016. Here is a good news to cheer up the soccer fans with European football's governing body UFA announcing the return of spectators during Euro 2020-21 championships in 8 out of a total of 12 venues. The tournament will commence on 11th of June with the final is scheduled for 11th of July. Sports Desk, AIR News. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for the day. In national capital Delhi, maximum temperature is expected to be 37 degrees Celsius, while it recorded a minimum of 16 degrees. Mumbai, with a partly cloudy sky, is expected to see a maximum temperature of around 33 degrees. It registered a minimum of 24 degrees Celsius. Chennai is also expected to have a partly cloudy sky, with temperatures moving from a minimum of 25 to a maximum of 36 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a party cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. The city is expected to have a maximum temperature of around 34 degrees Celsius. It witnessed a minimum of 27 degrees. Srinagar will have a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards the afternoon or evening. Temperature will rise from a minimum of 5 to a maximum of 22 degrees Celsius. Jammu, minimum temperature was 15 degrees Celsius while maximum will be around 32 degrees Celsius. Leh is expected to have a partly cloudy sky with a maximum temperature of around 10 degrees. The minimum temperature was minus 4 degrees. Gilgit will have a partly cloudy sky with temperatures rising from a minimum of 8 to a maximum of 23 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad is likely to have a clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards the afternoon or evening. Maximum temperature will be around 27 degrees Celsius. The minimum was 9 degrees Celsius. Dehradun with a mainly clear sky will see a maximum temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. It recorded a minimum of 15 degrees. Chandigarh temperature is expected to move from a minimum of 20 to a maximum of nearly 37 degrees Celsius. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Newspapers carry different stories on their front pages today. The pioneer headlines, US drill in EEZ, India protests. With Bengal all set for fourth phase of polls today, Hindustan Times writes, 44 seats at stake in fourth phase of Bengal polls today. With alarming surge in COVID cases, the Times of India reports, India's active cases cross 1 million at all-time high now. With rising cases in Maharashtra, the Asian age informs, took Maha lockdown looms as state runs out of vaccines. On the Hindu rights, Delhi government plans several curbs as COVID cases cross 8.5k mark. Sub-headlines read, proposal to ban all gatherings except marriages and funerals, and schools shut till further notice. In a significant move, the Apex Court on Friday said that people are free to choose their religion. In the Sun Time headline, SE turns petition seeking law against conversion harmful. And finally, with Queen Elizabeth's husband, Prince Philip's death, the Indian Express writes, for Britain's Queen Elizabeth, the only man I could ever love. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Polling begins in 44 seats spread across five districts in West Bengal for fourth phase of assembly elections. Over 1.15 crore voters to decide the fate of 373 candidates. Prime Minister Modi holds a virtual summit with his Dutch counterpart, says the two countries working together in new areas like Indo-Pacific supply chains and global digital governance. Over 9 crore 78 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far. 1,31,968 new cases reported across the country. Ten states account for over 83% of the new COVID-19 cases. In Chhattisgarh, total lockdown enforced in eight districts in view of spike in COVID-19 cases. T20 
Tika Utsav to be organized across the nation from tomorrow to fight the surging coronavirus infection. Election Commission asked political parties to observe COVID guidelines during election campaigns. Four people killed in fire incident at Nagpur Hospital. President Prime Minister expressed grief. And in cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore defeated Mumbai Indians by two wickets in the opening match of Indian Premier League in Chennai. Chennai Super Kings to take on Delhi Capitals in Mumbai this evening. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a great day ahead.